Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Peace be upon you all and welcome to the channel. In this video, we will discuss an important, possibly the core of the Novus Mundus mechanical system for tabletop role playing, or to be precise, tabletop role plays. As before, I will resort to analogies from Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition to try and match uh, uh, and through that clarify the mechanics of the system. For this episode we will cover the term stratum, remora and expectation. These are terms specific to the system Novus Mundus though this is also a mathematical term. <laughs> but these three keywords are part or are related to the mechanics of the Novus Mundus system. Stratum is similar to the ability scores in Dungeons and Dragons. And we will discuss each analogy in a moment for those who are un either unfamiliar with the Dungeons and Dragons 5th edition rule system or who wish to review that and its relationship with the Novus Mundus system. Perhaps I should use arrows. Remoras are difficulty classes. The difficulty class system in Dungeons and Dragons. Difficulty class. Class difficile. <laughs> okay. Lastly are expectations. And these are ability score modifiers. Ability score modifiers. Sometimes they are referred to as modifiers without the term ability score. Before I explain what each term means or how each term functions, I will explain these three briefly. In Dungeons and Dragons and possibly other associated mechanics such as Pathfinder, possibly Cyberpunk, I believe it does not have, obviously does not have the same ability scores, but I believe it has similar ability scores. In Dungeons and Dragons, we have Strength, we have Dexterity, abbreviated as Dex, this one is abbreviated as strength, um, or rather str. In programming, str refers to strings. <laughs> Constitution or con for convict. <laughs> Wisdom for w wis, wis. Intelligence for because I'm I-N-T, dynamite, <laughs> I cracked myself up, and charisma, which is cha-ka, yeah, these are the ability, th these are the abilities, when you are creating a character for Dungeons and Dragons, regardless of the system utilized to generate the statistics for these six, Ultimately, you have six different numbers that represent a character's aptitude in these particular abilities. For the sake of simplicity, we will provide examples here. Let us say we use the dice rolling mechanism to generate the statistics, though I will not cover how these statistics are generated, you can 
refer to my playlist for dun the Dungeons and Dragons tutorial, though I still have not finished this because honestly, I hate the system of Dungeons and Dragons. <laughs> I hate it because it focuses on quantifying the character in a stupid manner, unfortunately. So let us say the statistic generated for strength is 16, for dexterity is 10, for constitution, let us say 15, for wisdom, 11, for intelligence, 12, and for charisma, 14. These are the ability scores. So 16 is the ability score for the strength ability. 10 is the ability score of the, abil the dexterity ability and so on and so forth. Normally, these are worthless. They are only essential to generate or calculate these. Sometimes, Sometimes these ability scores do play a role. For example, the strength ability score is used to determine if a character is able to wear heavy armor or not. I believe the minimum threshold is 18. I could be mistaken. Could be either 16 or 18. However, mostly these ability scores are useless. They are worthless except for the ability score modifiers. Let us see if I remember the proper calculation for ability score modifiers. I believe the ability score modifier is the ability score minus the average, which the creators of Dungeons and Dragons deemed to be 10. I do not know why. I believe what was the lowest bound for ability scores? I believe it is 5, and the highest is 20. I guess they took half of 20 and decided that that is the average. I honestly do not know. Then divide the difference by 2, I believe. Okay, let us test it and see. Once I test it, I will know with complete certainty if this is the correct equation or not. Let us try it with 10 because the modifier for 10 and 11, uh, the modifier is 0. 10 minus 10, that is 0 divided by 2, will still be 0. 11 minus 10, is 1 divided by 2 is 0 0.5 but decimals or floating points are disallowed in Dungeons and Dragons and I believe you always round down so it will also be 0 so I believe this is the correct calculation every two increments increases the ability modifier by 1 so 10 and 11 will be 0 12 and 13 will be 1, 14 and 15 will be 2, 16 and 17 will be 3, uh, 18 and 19 will be 4, and I believe 20 is 5. No, wait, 20 minus 10 is 10, yeah, it will be 5, yes. Okay, I will put these here in case I need it for later. So let us write the corresponding ability score modifiers here. I will use this color. 16 will be uh, 6 divided by 2, that is 3. So plus 3. You can have negative ability score modifiers if the ability score is below 10, obviously. So the ability score of 9 yields negative 1, n n minus 8, uh, 8, sorry, yields negative 1 as well, S uh, 7 yields negative 2, and so on and so forth, until you reach 5, which uh, if 
5 minus 10 is 5 divided by 2, that is 2.5. You round, so it is negative 3. Okay. Hopefully, I have the equation correctly. Hopefully. Okay. So this will be... If, uh, it increases after the the odd number so when it starts with even it is a new modifier so this will be 14 and 15 this they will be the same so these will be plus 2 this will be 0 and this will be plus 1 okay these are the Im the most important, if not the only important statistic within the game. The ability score modifiers for Dungeons and Dragons and the associated role-playing game mechanics or systems. What are these used for? They are used to combat or triumph over this the difficulty class. Let us cover a simple example for difficulty class and how the ability score modifiers are used to overcome this threshold. Here we have a warrior and let us say that this warrior um, and I'm trying to draw a 2D figure, but with a 3D pose. <laughs> okay, fine. Let us continue with this. Possibly add the chest here like so. There. Uh, maybe I will remove this. And this warrior wishes to jump over or across a gap or a hole in the ground. The warrior simply wishes to jump. He might as well jump. <laughs> I crack myself up. Okay. The warrior wishes to jump from this point to this point across or over the gap. This action has chances of success and chances of failure. The threshold that determines success or failure is known as the diffi difficulty class, also abbreviated as DC as in the comic books that have terrible movies. Well, Marvel is joining them, so <laughs> it does not truly really matter at this point. DC or difficulty class. This is arbitrarily decided by the host of the game. The higher the number, the more difficult the task is. The smaller the number, the, mo uh, the easier the task. So the greater the number, the harder the task. The, the lower the number, the easier the task is. Let us say that <clears throat> the difficulty class for this action is 11. 11 tends to be rather low within the, the umbrella of Dungeons & Dragons. So this can be considered an easy task. Though I believe the lowest possible DC according to the official rules is 5. If I recall correctly, I could be mistaken because I honestly do not care. Now, the host in this scenario will ask the player controlling this character to roll for a skill or an ability that is related to jumping 
in this scenario it will be strength or athletics some hosts may ask for dexterity or acrobatics either way is inconsequential to us but let us use athletics for this example because i feel it is more appropriate as opposed to acrobatics here the character has plus three for strength which means that his athletics will also have a plus three modifier unless the character is proficient or expert in athletics then we add plus two or plus four respectively to the modifier that is the player in this scenario will roll a 20 sided die also called the d20 and then add the modifier to the result of that roll the modifier for the strength being utilized here is 3 to give a result for this example let us say that the character rolled an 8 8 plus 3 will yield 11 in Dungeons and Dragons, if the roll is greater than or equal to the DC, the action succeeds. What if the player rolled a 7 instead of an 8? Then the result is 10, which means that the character will fail the action. Then the host narrates the failure. Possibly the character will either trip before jumping or fall into the endless abyss and die, frustrating the player. Why? Because even though he has a good modifier, because the event relies on luck rather than skill, he failed. Do not believe those who uh, say who claim that they enjoy dice rolls. They are lying. No one enjoys the dice rolls. They could be hilarious in a moment or two, but not continuously. And that is how these three work in tandem. Now let us see these three now. We have seen their analogies and how they function. Let us see how these three function now. Do I have room? I will need to delete. Delete these. Bye bye, baby balloon. And delete this. And delete this. We covered the pillars or the different abilities that comprise a character or behave as a pillar for character creation. We still have not covered skills for the Novus Mundus system. That will be for a later video, Allah and God willing. Each skill will have its own stratum, remora, and expectations. How so? We will use the skills from Dungeons and Dragons for this example. One of the skills in Dungeons and Dragons within the ability of dexterity is known as acrobatics as the name implies it governs actions related to gymnastics i will use it as an example here pretend that this skill exists in the novus mundus system it does not exist well, let us wait until we actually cover skills and you will see how it exists, but in reality it does not exist. Let us say that we have a skill called acrobatics. How will acrobatics benefit from these three? This is where I need to create the strata for you, which is the plural of stratum. May need to enlarge it slightly. 
and you will see why I enlarged it in a moment. Did I enable transparency? Oh, yes. Two, three, four, five. This is why I like PowerPoint, Microsoft PowerPoint, because it can actually inform you of proper alignment. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Eight. We'll pull this slightly to the left. And I may, you know what? I will pull this slightly to the right. <laughs> and then pull these slightly to the left like a smooth criminal. Okay. There. I managed to fit all nine in the width of this screen. Each of these are known as strata, stratum for the singular, strata for the plural. I will label it here. And let us use this color. Stratum. Probably need to reduce the font. Um, 14. Will that fit? 12. You will see why I needed to shorten the word or shrink the word. Each one of these is called a stratum. Yeah, each is not each are. I apologize for the previous mistake. These strata determine the success or the failure of a particular action by a character. How so? You can think of this or these as experience bars, similar to what you see in video games. This indicates that the character is experienced in a particular skill, which is acrobatics in this example, and this one indicates that the character is well experienced in the particular skill, which is acrobatics in this example. The character levels up each stratum every time the skill is used. If the character keeps practicing their acrobatics, their stratum will increase. They will gain the experience points. Then once they reach a certain threshold, they level up to the following stratum. And they keep leveling up until they reach the maximum level, which is nine in this scenario. How do these strata determine the success or the failure of a particular action? <clears throat> Firstly, before I continue, I need to label these. So this will be stratum 1. You will see why I need to label them in a moment. Stratum 1, stratum 2, stratum 3. I will edit the numbers shortly. 4, 5... Six, seven, wait, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. I probably counted from here instead of here. Then I will remove these. Probably should have copied the word stratum by itself. And then right here, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
8 and 9. Perfect, Amici. Oh yeah, Amici is an inside joke for uh, an event that took place in the past. That is a tale for another time. Okay. Where is the determinant of success or failure? In Stratum 1, the chances of a character succeeding in the respective skill lies within a range. What is the range of success or the, the range of uh, success in terms of probability for stratum 1? That would be 1 to 10 percent. The chances of succeeding lie between 1 and 10. Lower bound and upper bound. Once the character levels up to stratum 2, the chances of succeeding in a particular action increase from 1 to 10 to become 11 and 20 percent. Once the character fully levels this stratum, the chances of succeeding in acrobatics increases even further from 21 to 30 and they keep increasing by 10 31 to 40 41 to 50 51 to 60 61 to 70 71 to 80 and finally 91 uh, sorry 81 to 90 as you can see there are discrete values the uh, uh, the data cannot be truly considered continuous because it does not factor in floating numbers but if you ignore floating numbers then it can be considered continuous Now, if the character is at stratum 9, the chances of succeeding at a particular action become 81 to 91. This still does not depict the challenge and the triumph of the character over that challenge, similar to what we have seen with these three. This is where the remora play a role. Each stratum has a counter stratum to it, also known as the remora. Each stratum has a remora that the character must overcome to succeed in the action. And here is where I will actually have to write the word Remora here. I will pause the video, finish labeling all the Remoras, then return to you to avoid dragging this video further. I have returned after labeling the Remora. As you can see, the strata also function as remoras. How so? Uh, I will use... Uh, let us use the gray color. Stratum 1 opposes remora 9. Like so. What does that mean? Unless otherwise stated by the host, if a character still is still within, or uh, yeah, if a character is still within stratum one, that difficulty class or the remora 
automatically is set to remora 9. The host may decide that the difficulty, the difficulty of the task is not as steep as remora 9. So the host can de designate it as remora 8, remora 7, remora 6, and so on and so forth. Unless otherwise stated or unless otherwise designated by the host, the difficulty of the act or the remora of the action is automatically set by the corresponding remora as you can see here. Stratum 1 opposes remora 9 because the chances of success in the beginning are low that obviously means that the chances of failure are high but once the character but once the character becomes more experienced with a skill the chances of success increase and the chances for failure decrease stratum 2 opposes remora 8 Stratum 3 opposes uh, Remora 7. Stratum 4 opposes Remora 6. Stratum 5 is recursive. It opposes Remora 5. It opposes itself. You may be wondering where is the section related to... Oh, this should be 90, not 91. I apologize. Where is the section related to 91 to 100? That will come in a moment, inshallah, bismillah. Okay, I'll put a zero here. Oh, yeah. How would stra a stratum combat a remora? Let us check an example similar to or let us use the same example where a character wishes to jump over a hole so let us use the same example from before here is the character and here is the hole. Now, let us pretend that we need to use acrobatics to see if the character will actually succeed in jumping over the hole or fail the act. Though I still believe athletics is the better skill, but let us use acrobatics for this example. Let us also say that the character is inexperienced with acrobatics. The character does not train efficiently or diligently. Thus, he has not leveled his strata beyond the first stratum. So his acrobatics currently is at stratum 1, which automatically sets his difficulty class or the threshold for failure or the remora to 9, remora 9. DC here or difficulty class is remora 9 and i'm using terminology from dungeons and dragons to try and clarify the mechanics what does the player do in this scenario instead of rolling a d20 the player rolls a probability die also known as a percentile die, also known as a hundred-sided die, colloquially referred to as D100. 
it has 100 sides and since this is probability the d100 was chosen by the creator for this scenario the result of the roll and by the way this if you do not wish to purchase it from stores because the commonly present one is the d6 or the six-sided die you can use a roller online if you type on google dice roller it will allow you to set the number of sides and it will roll for you randomly i should say pseudo randomly because randomness does not truly exist even in software development you do not truly randomize a number you use a particular equation to generate a randomized number and since you are using an equation it is not truly random so how would a character overcome this task the character needs to roll within this range between 81 and 90 or above 90 to actually uh, sorry the character needs to roll above 90 to succeed since 81 to 90 is the range of failure and below below 81 is automatic failure obviously so the chances of fail sorry hold on let me confirm with the creator and i will be right back okay i confirmed with the creator you need to roll above the upper bound there will be cases where you are required to roll above the lower bound but that requires specialized circumstances which will be discussed later on bi'ithnillah and god willing for now know that your cutoff point must be the upper bound so the d100 must be either 90 or higher if the number is at the, uh, satisfies these criteria then the action succeeds but if the number is below this criteria these criteria the action fails obviously there will still be the element of luck though luck truly does not exist there is only fate but to simulate fate that is the purpose of this percentile die however as you can see here the chances of failure depend on the character's tardiness if the character is diligent and increases or levels up the skill then the chances of failure will decrease if for example the character has attained stratum 9 the character needs only to roll above 10 to pass the action you may argue that the player may roll for example 2 in a d100 which is common it does happen so how does how does experience play a role now if a, if a player rolls a 2 that is where expectations play a role each stratum harbors expectations depending on your experience the more experienced your character is the higher the expectation let us take a look at the distribution of expectations i will use this color at stratum one your expectation is minus eight so this will be added or rather subtracted from the number rolled to indicate the lack of experience hence the term expectation because everyone expects you to fail at this level 
stratum 2, it is negative 6. Stratum 3, it is negative 4. Stratum 2, it is negative 2. Stratum 5, it is 0. You do not add, nor do you remove anything. Stratum 6 is positive 2. Stratum 7 is positive 4. Stratum 8 is positive 6. And finally, stratum 9 is positive 8. So if the player rolls a 2 and he is and the player is at stratum 9 they can add 8 to the dice roll and that is how they succeed in the action plus 8 in this scenario but obviously it would depend on your stratum here it will actually be minus 8 the system is designed to allow for flex flexibility, for example, or I should say robustness, not flexibility. The failure here is Remora 9, for, for example. The host may customize the end result based on the Remora rolled. For example, if the Remora for the act here is 9, and the player's role is within Remora 7, th the end point or the result may be severe, since it is a bit further away from stratum 9. But if the resultant role is at stratum 8, closer to stratum 9, the, re the result or the consequence may not be as severe. And if it is rolled at stratum 4, then the result may be extreme, extremely severe, and so on and so forth. The host may opt for that option if they wish. The system is designed to accommodate this robustness. If not, this will be successful and everything else will be, <coughs> will cons will be considered failure. And it will be considered failure at the same degree or the same severity. This is ultimately left to the host. They do not need to abide by a particular mechanic. And that is why this, this, that is how the system is actually designed. It will allow players and hosts to design or redesign the mechanics to fit their own playing style which is why the creator does not wish to share a handbook simply to, ha uh, to prevent players from adhering to certain strictness. The expectations can also be customized by the host. This could be 10, for example, this could be eight, this could be four, uh, six, four, and then two. Again, it would depend on the host and the players. The reason I would like for you to adhere to the upper bound threshold would be revealed once we discuss when you can actually roll above the lower bound. So you will see that later, Allah and God willing. For now, we will stop at this stage where we cover the stratum, the remora, and the expectation for a particular skill. So remember, each stratum has an opposing remora automatically unless the host decides otherwise. For example, if the character is at stratum 1, but the task is not that difficult, the host can set the remora at remora 3 and so on and so forth. In the next episode, بإذنillah and God willing, we will see the different skills available to each pillar. Some pillars have only one skill, uh, only a single skill. Some have multiple skills. 
Some skills do not even require the usage of expectation, as in you would not be expected to roll for a particular action to see if you will pass it or not. Some will require it. Some are customizable. You can either apply the expectation or you may not need to apply it. It depends on your vision. Then you may ask what is the point of having a skill if the expectations will not be applied. Because skills have certain traits or feats that are unlocked when a certain stratum is reached. Once that stratum is reached, that trait or feat is unlocked. And obviously that trait will assist the character in the adventure. And we will see these traits later on or feats later on bi'ithnillah and God willing. I hope this video was helpful and beneficial to you all. Enjoy the rest of your day everyone. Be safe, take care and peace be upon you all. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.